Okay, we're going to get started. Um, so, kia ora koutou, ko Claire Lanyon uh, It's my pleasure to introduce Lisa Moore, um, talking about Theatre Marae and the Swing in Motion, Te Rako. Oh, Slido is working, so please... there? Kia ora koutou, e mihi ana, ko wai au. Ko ingarangi, ko kotirana, te whakapapa ranga mai. He pākehā tangata tariti a hau. Ko Lisa Mall tōku ingua. E noho ana au ki kaharore i te whanganui ātara. Hoi anō ko tēnei taku mihi ki ngā mana whenua o tēnā rohe. Ko Ngāti Toa, ko Te Atiawa, ko Taranaki Whānui hoki. Tēnā koutou. Greetings to you all. My ancestors are from England and Scotland. I'm a white New Zealander, a Pākehā in New Zealand because of the Treaty of Waitangi. My name is Lisa Moore. I live in Karori, a suburb of Wellington City. I acknowledge the nations of that region, Ngāti Toa, Te Atiawa and Taranaki Whānui. Tēnā koutou. Um, I've worked since my early 20s in performing arts and events as a lighting designer and organiser based here in Te Whanganui Atara. Today I'm going to give a little bit about the history of the organisation I work for, Te Rako Hua o Te Wao Tapu, um, Māori Theatre Company and some kind of future opportunities that we're working on in the digital space. So we're not using super advanced technology but it's definitely new territory for us. <coughs> Te Rako has had many iterations over the years and is currently a small organisation that works with lots of people in our Theatre Marae projects. The core group is three of us in the Leadership Pai Pai. I'm going to introduce the other two. Jim Mori Moriarty is the kaitohu and founder of Te Rako. He is an actor, director and poet. Jim started performing as a child with the Māori Theatre Trust. He was guided in that path by the Ngāti Toa elders at his marae in Takapuwahia in Poriroa where he grew up. Jim's pepeha includes Ngāti Toa and also the people of Ngāti Kowata, Ngāti Kahungunu, Rangitani, Scotland, Norway and Italy. As well as Theatre Marae with Te Rako, Jim works as a group therapist out of Kōkere Marae one day a week. He also supports men who have had brushes with the criminal justice system to be painters and renovators. Jim leads two work crews who fix people's homes in communities affected by damp housing through a program called Tuanui. I met Jim quite a few years ago in the 1990s at Takirua Theatre. Uh, I ended up doing the lighting for a show he directed about the 1981 Springbok tour. Helen Pierce Otani is Rongomai Wahine. Ngāti Kahungunu, Ngāpuhi, Te Rarawa, Ngāti Kuri and Ngāti Ruanui. She's been working with Jim and Te Rako since 1999. Helen and I also met in the 90s. We were both part of presenting Hone Koka's play Waiora around Aotearoa and to Hawaii in the UK. I was the lighting designer and technician um, and Helen was one of the actors in the company. <coughs> Helen's work as a playwright, researcher and theatre practitioner grounds us at Te Rako. Helen has an immense ability to draw strands together in her writing. She creates stage plays that speak to many people. Helen is a registered psychologist. She gained her PhD in psychology just last year. She also works as a group therapy, therapist out of Kōkere Marae and she lectures at Te Heringa Waka in psychology. I am the Kaifakahaere Kopapa at Te Rako, producer, administrator and creative collaborator. I don't work in therapy. The thing I do on the side is be a mad professor Wikipedian. I write um, glam sector articles in Wikipedia and history articles and articles on underrepresented groups, uh, women in red badge. Um, last year I ran a Pacifica Wikipedia project to support Pacifica people writing about Pacifica Arts. <clears throat> Next year I'm going to do a Māori theatre project in Wikipedia. So we're all dedicated theatre practitioners and we also all contribute in other fields. Mm 
Te Rako's vision is to see a socially just and equitable Aotearoa. Our mission is to advance creativity, belonging and holistic well-being for all New Zealanders. With Te Rako, I work closely as a co-producer with Jim Moriarty. As a Pākehā in a Māori organisation, I help paddle the waka through the emails and navigate the colonial institutions we engage with. <clears throat> Jim and Helen lead the creative paipai and the whakawhanaungatanga. Te Rako was um, germinated through the Māori activism of the 60s, 70s and 80s. Jim and other founders were in the group Ngā Tamatoa, amongst other things. They were marching for awareness and action for land rights, Māori language, by Māori, for Māori. There was a lack of authentic Māori voices in theatre. The majority of plays about Māori and with Māori characters were written, directed and produced by Pākehā. The activism of Māori to be in control of telling the stories was part of the legacy from the Māori Theatre Trust. This was passed on to Jim through the gifting of the name Te Rākauhua o Te Waotapu by his auntie Harata Horumana. The name means the blossoming fruit tree of our sacred grove. If you can imagine a grove of trees, each tree is human activity. One branch is Māori performing arts. The this theatre company, Te Rāko, is one fruit of amongst many ways that Māori express cultural identity. At the budding stage in 1989, the founders of Te Rāko, alongside Jim, included Rangi Moana Taylor, Gabe Giddens, Ramika Cope and Jerry Bantz. They wanted to provide a space for the voices of the dispossessed and present plays that told Māori stories from a Māori perspective. Jim and others wanted to work in a creative environment that prioritised Māori aspirations and upheld Te Tiriti or Waitangi. In 1990, Jim and others brought the carvings that are in our logo into the Depot Theatre, which, lately, which later became Takirua Theatre. They presented plays and held Wānanga, the first ever Theatre Marae. Te Rāko's Theatre Marae process encompasses the sacred and worldly features of both theatre practice and marae tikanga. Their efforts in the early 90s didn't suddenly open the doors to Pākehā institutions, so Te Rāko toured to schools up and down Aotearoa. They toured a lot. They also created work in prisons, a well-remembered one from the Wellington region is A Christmas Wish by Women at Arohata Prison in 1997. So Te Rāko has morphed over the decades, but always with activism and a political voice held strongly. In 2011, they were part of creating Haka Theatre with the show Aroha Nui, The Greatest Love. Working in a kaupapa Māori framework with Māori people at the helm, Te Rāko is equally about the process of making work as it is the final presentation to audiences. Tangata Tariti are also present in our companies. Uh, the process is connecting participants to each other and to the histories and, ex and to each other's histories and to each other's experiences. This is common in other Māori performing arts organisations too. Each group is a fruit in the sacred grove and many also trace back to early Māori practitioners, writers, educators, activists and artists. Like many Māori organisations, our work is inseparable from social context. Te Rāko's fruit has its own flavour. We bridge healing and arts with a holistic wellbeing approach. We bring community people into our work. Uh, we, we work in a co-design with community and we work with community people as actors in our projects too. As I mentioned before, our work brings forward voices of the dispossessed, tells Māori stories from a Māori perspective and prioritises Māori aspirations. Working with young people, Te Rāko has used both workshops and scripted plays as a way to help young people learn about the colonial and Māori history of Aotearoa and their own belonging within their region. One of our theatre and education models includes going into schools, getting teenagers to commit, commit their weekends and holidays and staging plays with large casts. A Pākehā father of one of these kids said something like, thanks for inoculating our kids against racism. The teens are learning about history and also grappling with how to be an integral part of a group as they learn roles, dances and songs to perform to their peers and their parents. 
I've been part of a few of these big group plays as the lighting designer, including the series The Undertow that was presented at Sounding Theatre in Te Papa, where we were this morning. That was part of the collaboration between the museum and Ngāti Toa while they were the resident iwi. The Undertow was four plays written by Helen with intertwining whakapapa between the characters. Um, the plays uh, in The Undertow are the Ragged, set in 1840, Dog and Bone, set in 1869, Public Works, set in World War I, and the last one, set, Land Eaters, set one day in the future. Um, Helen draws quite a lot of her dialogue on those histor historical plays from archives and you know, diaries and oral histories. Um, and the last one is about the Vietnam War, and she wrote that as part of her Masters of Psychology and had verbatim texts in that from soldiers with lived experience. So inspired by the works in the undertow, um, cinematographer Walker Atwell proposed a film shoot to capture the live stage shows. Others agreed and funding was raised. The undertow was then a series broadcast on Māori TV um, with each of the four plays becoming an episode. We're also aware that cost is a barrier across live theatre, so obviously having a broadcast on Māori TV has got a wide reach, um, but when we do our plays live, touring 20 or so people is quite costly and logistical, a big logistical activity. <clears throat> so digital has got a different possibilities, um, and there are other ways that we haven't thought of yet. Uh, in 2019, Helen wrote a play in response to group therapy, where people were referred due to many reasons, drugs, alcohol and violence, underlying their referrals and, their, and you know, substance abuse was hurt deep in their bodies from sexual violence as a child. <coughs> so um, the little light subjects, Jim likes to say, of uh, incest and suicide. Um, yeah, so this was a community co-design project um, that came from the therapy group that Helen was working with. Uh, the Swing is the name of the show. And it was created alongside people with lived experience. It was presented in development a couple of times and a nationwide tour was planned. The plan was always to show it and sitting in the audience would be people who could offer support and services. So acknowledgement of incest, suicide and intergenerational trauma is the first step in healing. And many, many people with lived experience and those who work in the healing and therapy space know that it's often hidden, not talked about, swept under the carpet, avoided. We had, a, we had good interest of people who wanted the swing to, to, for us to present it live from the police college, counsellors, medical people, Māori social service providers. Then COVID came, so we couldn't do it live. We filmed it. We were supported by Creative New Zealand, <coughs> following on from the pivot years when theatre invented television. Um, we had an idea that we could do online webinars, maybe staff training with footage from the play at the heart. So um, we have filmed it, and um, what we, this has now morphed into us screening it with people, with a matapaki afterwards, a facilitated conversation. Um, Helen and Jim will always go with this work. We won't broadcast this on TV, for example. The purpose is to bring the subject into the light, and this really needs to be done with care. We showed it last week at Circa Theatre. We invited key people and had extremely rich conversations with the audience after each screening. Uh, we listened to feedback and considered next steps for the work. We're doing this more and more, this filming business. Here's an example. The Battalion is a theatre and education play that we filmed at St Mary's College in Wellington. Young people played soldiers um, from the Māori Battalion, which is so poignant because so many of the soldiers that went to that war and that were in the Māori Battalion were only teenagers themselves, that they'd lied to enlist. The school students learn history and they also learn a lot about self-identity as they research their great-grandparents' connections to World War II. Uh, we've published this play as a script and we have an educational resource written by Susan Batty. Another example of our recent work that we filmed is a play by Jim Moriarty, um, Ode to Te Rauparaha, that we presented in the Wellington Heritage Festival. So we filmed that. We're not quite sure what we're going to use with the footage, but we have the footage. <coughs> 
We're now in partnership with Te Runanga o Tua Rangatira in Porirua, making a new work about gambling harm. So this is for their team, so they can use it in their communities. The play is called Unreal, and Helen's written that one. Um, we're currently in rehearsals for that. <coughs> Ngāti Tua want the gambling harm play digital. They want it accessible. They can show it in people's lounges to small groups. Um, maybe it can be broken up into modules as a resource. It can be online, in person and live. So um, that's what we're working on now. Um, and I have a little preview of the swing so you can get a sense of it. So that's the video that's going to be set up by the text there. Um, it's about three minutes long. <coughs> it does, I think that they, they do it, yep, yeah, it does have some swearing, so just. Let me tell you the story of when death came to the world of people. The reason why one day we all must die. In days past, when the earth and the sky were newly ripped apart and still grieving for one another, there was a beautiful girl born from the union of the forest god and the red earth woman. Her name was Hinetitama. The Dawn Maiden and her father loved her so <coughs> My children, I'm the dad, and my job is to protect them, not hurt them. How could you think that about me? I'm not my father, that asshole, and what he put us through. I would never do that to her, never! I tried to help her, Rewa. Truly, I did. But I only made it worse. Much worse. And look what happened. His family's fucked. Sorry. I don't want to hear sorry. I want to know why. You don't remember, do you? No one around here bloody remembers. No. People can change. Really? How do you know? Have you seen that happen? What do you mean? What you just said. Can people change? I mean, really change. Our theatre work is about process, supporting learning and growth amongst participants and audiences alike. 
showcasing stories in our society with Māori agency. So we are seeking invitations to present the swing next year. Some want to use it to provoke conversations in their communities. Some to start their own co-design process investigating Pūrāko as a healing tool. Uh, we're really open to suggestions. There are ways we know to bring our work, but there are also possibilities we haven't thought about, maybe galleries, libraries, museums and archives. Um, in works like The Swing, we're presenting statistics of harm in a values-based human way. There is hope and next steps layered into our work. There's beautiful waiata, beautiful performances and beautiful design, as you can see. So as I said, I'm open to suggestions. Uh, thanks for coming to the presentation. I know I was up against some stiff competition. <laughs> Um, and I'm happy at question time if, uh, if you want to share a reflection or a feedback as well as questions. So we're really passionate about the work we do and if you are too, I'd love to hear from you. Kia ora. Well, that was incredible. I mean, beautifully filmed as well. It's not easy to transfer from theatre into film. Um, any questions from the floor? Any comments, feedback? Um, some years ago, uh, 2018, Museums Aotearoa Conference in Christchurch, we invited Tar Mark Solomon to give a keynote speech and he sideswiped the whole room by um, giving a talk about our collective responsibility for family harm. Mm. And it was very powerful, but I felt that there was a huge reluctance among the institutions to, to, to kind of to figure out, or not reluctance, they didn't know how to figure out how to engage. Mm. It, have, what, what are your thoughts on how... As, as public organisations funded by councils and governments and those sort of things, how we can engage in a, in a way which is going to be acceptable to mm. both our audiences and our funders, but also can take some collective responsibility. Um, yeah, well, I mean, I think as, a, as an artist, my response is, as an artist, my response is to respond with art. Um, like, like this play is written from people with lived experience and you know Helen's ability as a psychologist to bring in different layers of um, you know like how people are in these spaces and dealing with the aftermath um, means that it just unlocks the conversations and people need to talk about it they need to be able to talk about it in a safe way we earlier this year went to drama in New Zealand and did, uh, with them did workshops with teachers. And so, so there was this conversation like, should we, our kids are the first responders, you know, the kids are the first responders to their peers. Um, they need to talk about it. The teachers need to feel safe to be able to talk about it with them. Um, there was a bit of a debate about whether they would show this, but certainly the senior students, most teachers were like, yes, this is the right thing to show our se Then Then they can talk about it. So. It is, it is tricky, there is elements of risk. Um, not talking about it just perpetuates it. it. It keeps those the isolation happening, so yeah. So I'd say challenge your institutions to connect with artists around these topics, yeah. Hi Lisa, I think it's really masterful the way that you've tapped into the history keeping potential or capacity of institutions and also expanded that into looking at sociological phenomena that's also been recorded mm. in that. I wanted to ask, with the process and the screenwriting, you mentioned that manuscripts and archives were utilised in getting that dialogue. Um, it's kind of a chicken and egg question. Does the 
secondary source or the primary source come first and then the screenwriting follows? How are those ideas conceived with ephemera and objects in museums? Helen, the writer, so um, the two, two plays that I know that she used text from diaries and um, oral histories are The Ragged and Public, no, Dog and Bone. And um, she's, she's a very rigorous researcher, so she spends a lot of time, so she will have read everything. So she definitely accesses all the archives first, and then she builds the narrative from that. She's weaving it in with different points that she wants to make. So every word, every character, every journey arc of all the characters is all very um, considered in the way that she writes. She kind of like produces these scripts which are full uh, and yeah, complete. But there's a great scene in The Ragged where they're um, New Britannia, they're all standing around in Thorndon Town and um, like the words that are coming out of these colonial white characters are just like, for a modern audience, like it's a shock and it's all from their diaries. It's what they said, it's what they were, it's just so expressive of the worldview of the times and, um, and amongst that she has like the, the chorus kind of weaving in and out being, being the tupuna, so yeah. It's a really accessible way to access that kind of information. Yeah. Any other questions? Probably just a, an observation I would really love to see. Um, Tarako, because we've been learning all about AI this week, mm. to see a, um, a work in the future, uh, a response, a, a dramatic response. Funny you should say that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Helen's like this. Yeah. So the new play that we've written, that she's written called Unreal, she has as, a, as part of the sort of theatrical um, foil or whatever in it, it's, a, it's an AI pokey machine. So, um, yeah, so she's kind of like brings that conversation in by having this, and we, the way we're theatricalising it, it's, an, it's a character that's called Old Scratch, and... Um, the, it's the premiere of the launch of the first ever AI gambling machine. So she was became very interested in this gambling harm about the the algorithms, the maths that's behind it all, and the kind of like uh, glitz and the ability to uh, you know addiction and all that sort of stuff in gambling. Yeah, so we have an AI gambling machine in our the the world the launch of it at the Hinaki Hotel in our new work, which we are filming in December, and then um, we're going to. Um, we plan to do a community tour of that live next year. So, yeah, and climate change is the other thing that she's really wanting to work on. Yep. So she's got a play brewing called the Swamp, which is um, yep. Excellent. Thank you. And I've just noticed in Slido, Andy wanted to pass on compliments, and I'll make sure you see the the comment. Um, so it's break time now. Um, cup of tea time. Decompress. <laughs> Thank you. Wonderful.